Welcome to the Daily Addictions channel. I am Joseph F. Alsis, Addiction Master on most social media. Today I'm going to be talking about a favorite movie of mine, Die Hard. This movie came out in 1988, directed by John McTiernan, or McTiernan. And that guy's been in some trouble, I think, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. Some, he hired like a fucking lawyer, um, an investigator, or some studio bullshit, but he actually did... The Predator, Hunt for Red October, or The 13th Warrior, which I've done a podcast on. And I think the trouble he got into was on Rollerball. But he has some talent, but this is a movie that hit me, again, perfect time, 80s. We got Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, Arnold Schwarzenegger for me was Conan that captivated me, so it's more of a medieval type genre of fantasy but lethal weapon is slots right in there for me this is a holiday movie it just fits in you know you see all the memes uh christmas doesn't start until what's this name falls off the nakatomi building i really enjoy this movie uh just the story itself it seemed pretty simple and and straightforward you have a blend of this hard action wisecracking cop and the family issues there's lots of things running through they did a good job of getting um the supporting actors and actresses to you do enough that you felt the weight of it and i think that works well when you revisit it because i think die hard's one of those uh, uh timeless movies it's gonna always stay up there there's um so much happening and it just works on a lot of levels that you don't have to get uh an outdated feeling i can imagine back in the day with the james cagney movies and stuff there is just some classics that stay there die hard's gonna stay there and i think at this time i think the beretta the, uh the gun was like in every movie at this time it was just uh i think lethal weapon won a award for it for like overdubbing it eight times to make the gun sound like a... Anyway. You have uh, Christmas Eve. This the New York detective goes to Los Angeles. He's having problems with his family. And that's really the beginning of it, of a innocent trip to California. His wife's having a party. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, tension mounting up between them. And then it all goes to hell when the Nakatomi building gets taken over by a quote-unquote terrorist. And holy shit, what a fun ride. He's never better, Bruce Willis. I'll do probably a podcast on Moonlighting. But really, I mean, I guess I, I'm going to do one on Remington Steel too. I think I like Remington Steel better. But I don't remember watching... Hmm. Watching Moonlight again going, oh, this guy's a star. He's going to be in something big. Although I do remember watching Remington Steel and going, that's James Bond. And there's a whole story in that. So I didn't really see him as a star. And this really launched him, in my opinion. Although, you know, I'm 17 when it came out. It's just hormones are going crazy. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. It just really fits in what you would expect from a New York cop and going into the uh, building and just all the wisecracks he does, the way he's written. You get to really appreciate side characters that, I mean, they tried to use them in other movies, but, I mean, okay, Die Hard 1 to 3, I really like. As a trilogy, I appreciate the third one for... Him still feeling like he's uh, John McClane and at a different point in his life. Where the first two are great, they're seamless. Uh, the second one might be a little, uh, uh, you know, you can't live up to the first one's hype. But I love it. I have fun. The third one I really liked. And it's just this progression to how he's getting older and things aren't work didn't work out with his family. That type thing. But the other ones, what is it, four or five, are just insane. He's like not... It's just like, doesn't feel like John McClane. And they, they don't work for me. But here we're talking about the first Die Hard movie. As I said, it came out in 1988. 
This is a, a classic, in my opinion. Something that'll never get tired for me. Always put it on. Like I said, it, the plot, it says it starts on Christmas Eve. And that's kind of like how it fit in for me and lots of people, I would guess. Although there might be debates on that. And like I said, you, you start to really love uh, the police officer in the movie. The wife. The tension between the reporter. And it's enough to break this non-stop action that's over the top really impressive at the time i mean there's just the things he's doing uh one of the scenes you know a lot of these things i always say well sometimes at the beginning i'll say no spoilers or major plot reveals that's really for tv shows and things that are current or maybe a new movie and i don't like to do that i'd rather one day go do do a deeper dive uh but he finds himself barefoot and every time I watch the movie and they shoot the glass and he's in the bathroom uh, taking the glass out of his feet and he's tying his feet up with like rags or something. It's just, it's one of those things. It's like when Rambo stitched himself up, uh, moments like that in movies where they're just, uh, taking the evolution of some premises and putting them to the extreme and showing, uh, that, you know, he might not make it, and it was a real um, heartfelt, he's talking to the guy in the microphone, I mean, the uh, the CB, I think it was, the police officer, and there's this tension between the FBI, and they make you really love the character, the side characters, you're rooting for him to uh, have a, go out in the sunset with his wife, so to speak, and you got these bunch of maniacs, and the way he's dealing with them is another aspect of the movie that I love you know he's I mean yeah maybe they'll put a little bit of emphasis on you know he's the protagonist and you, you know you're figuring things out but you have this takeover and he's trying to mark down how many of them there are and he starts antagonizing them you know getting into um, verbal arguments with them in a sense as he's trying to piece together what's going on and he's trying to tell the police and the FBI are fucking it up and you find out that the lead terrorist Hans is counting on the FBI and it's like a little twist just pulse pounding action great humor enough heartfelt moments a really good supporting cast that draws you into this guy who just wanted to go visit his wife because they're having troubles she moved uh, he finds out that she's using her maiden name, or she's not using her married name, and that's like a little tension right off the bat, but he doesn't get time to um, relax, he just tries to, oh yeah, one of the things was uh, jet lag or something, rub your, uh, crunch your toes into little fists and a carpet, so he's doing that when gunshots go off, and that's it, it just, the movie takes off, and um amazed uh, I, I, t I think I told the story maybe with Lethal Weapon that uh, it's one of those movies and I guess because you're 17 you weren't inundated with trailers and you could pick up your phone and see something and go look to see what people are talking about uh, at that point in my life at 17 movies came out and you went and you saw them someone just mentioned to me uh, at that when I was at that age and he's like did you see Lethal, Le Lethal Weapon I was like no I haven't seen it yet he goes go see it and I went to see it, it was blown away. Like, I didn't know, it wasn't a buzz, it wasn't a community to go on and see with the um, temperature is and what's the feeling like in the community, all their leaks, and, I mean, there's nothing back then. So you go to the movies, sometimes, yeah, you sneak in from the side door, you go to see three movies. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I did things like that here and there. I don't know if I was 17 and doing it, but okay. I assume I am, or I was. Because, you know, let's leave it at that. What an experience is a movie, the movie uh, going experience in general. Just a uh, great action movie that really has some moments that hook you in. And it continues into the sequel, but I think it kind of fades out with the fourth and fifth one. Because I could... Uh, really appreciate the third one in a different way and i think it's the third one is one of those 
the script was for a different premise, but they said it would fit well with John McClane, like Simon Says type thing, which I really love. Uh, I think Alan Rickman, who plays Hans Gruber, is, uh, you know, you, you just really grow to hate him and love him at the same time. Just really works. Even the, uh, they got like a, a limo guy who just drives in the beginning, but he's trapped in the garage. And they give him, they even give him a little part in it. And you got the antagonizing police officer and, uh, you know, oh, no, no, well, no, no. That's just the actually that's more of the second one, but these this tension between Powell, who's really trying to help him and understands what's going on, he's realizing that there's a cop in this building. Because he goes to investigate, they uh, shoot up his car. He's buying Twinkies, and that's his thing in the movie. And as McLean is uh, isolated in. He finds a CB, the first person he talks to is Powell, who was sent to investigate. He's like, get everybody down here. And then there's these tactics that the, it was, I don't know who the actor was, but um, you remember him from things here and there, but he plays like the chief of police. <laughs> and he's like this biggest asshole. And Powell's like, I, you know, I think this is one of us in there. Because, you know, John McClane's not trying to give his name. He's saying he's Roy Rogers. It's just great uh, cutaways to scenes that work really well to make it all come together. You didn't have to have a, I see things like, um, you know, White House Down or something like that. They try to do it, but it doesn't feel right. Uh, Bruce Willis is just natural in this point in his career of just emoting this New York, no frills guy in a sense who's having problems. And he just adapts to the situation. Crawling in fucking ducks in the building. Tying the uh, hose to him in one of the big explosions. Just some great piece, uh, what do you call it? Set pieces. And even when the fucking FBI guys come in towards the end, they're sending in uh, before that uh, an RV and they're using fucking rocket launchers from the window. and. John McClane sends a, he wraps a C4 into it, like a chair, office chair, he puts in the elevator. This is epic moments. It's great fun, and I think really good fun, where I would say I enjoy maybe the Expendables, but they don't have, well, that's an ensemble cast, but, you know, that the pieces come together, and it's made very well. It works on so many levels. It's just something I think everybody has to have at least sampled and if it's not for you fine but this is like the beginning of bruce willis's career in my opinion and i said in the beginning i didn't get captivated by what he was doing on moonlighting and i followed his career somewhat i just don't like the ending so die hard one two and three i recommend highly the first one if you haven't watched it it's just it's mandatory. You just have to do it before Christmas, Christmas Eve. As the plot and story progresses, you'll, you're will you almost going along with it. And again, it's one of those things you catch at a time when I'm 17 and there's a lot going on in your life. You remember certain movie experiences, and that's why I love cinema, even anime, cartoons, TV. The way I grew up, it was a, an important part. It was, you know, a window into worlds that, um, not to take, uh, you know, too seriously, but, you know, to just escape here and there and think about. And this was one of those movies. You watch it, you just fall in love with the character, you're rooting for him, your heart breaks when things go wrong, and in the end... He's beaten, bloodied, and he just wants to get to his wife. And well, you find out in the second one and the third one. <laughs> Doesn't go too well in that department, but hey, what a ride. Die Hard is one of the best action movies of its kind. Uh, I would compare it with Lethal Weapon in a sense, but I like to put Lethal Weapon in the buddy cop sort of drama. 
you know, area. But looking back, you know, Arnold couldn't pull this off, in my opinion. I was never really into his um, trying to relate type characters. And I love him in other ways. Die Hard, 1988. Watch it. Bruce Willis. I think everybody would love it. And if you haven't seen it, give it a shot. Be well, everybody. My best to you and yours.